Foot Clan, we've got a great episode of the Fantasy Footballers for you today. The rest of the week, four matchups. We've got ballers on a budget. Some news. What's wrong with Devontae Adams? We'll talk about all of it today. Stay tuned. Take your game day treats to the next level with the new M&M's Hazelnut Spread Chocolate Candies. Enjoy them on their own or use them to spruce up your favorite desserts. Ladies and gentlemen, M&M's are delicious. Oof, all variants of Breaking M&M's news. are delicious. So guess what? It should not be a surprise that M&M's Hazelnut Spread Chocolate Candies are also delicious because they are. Go hazelnutty and try the new M&M's Hazelnut Spread Chocolate Candies today. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers once again. We got a ball game last night. It was a good one. Definitely hit the over. Definitely did. I think we got to see that Green Bay Packers defense finally. Well, I I guess they 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 did two things. They, yeah. They broke. They had been a bend not break defense. If you look at the statistics about them, they had been a defense right. that could stop you once you got into the red zone. That didn't really happen, but limited Carson Wentz's total yardage to, you know, under, what is it, under 200 yards. That's yeah, right. It's, but they couldn't stop the run at all. Yes, I would say it, it's it's an incomplete picture to just look at the what the points they gave up because the Eagles were given short fields multiple times. You had uh, Miles Sanders had a massive run on a, on a kickoff return. That turned into an easy score. Aaron Rodgers had a fumble on their side of the field. So I, I'm not, I bet he grimaced afterwards. Oh, I'm sure he did, and he looked at he looked at someone and said, "Why is this your fault?" If there were prop bets <laughs> for like over under, and they set a line, how many grimaces a game? The, Aaron Rodgers. The camera gives, zooms in to the I, grimace. I would 100 percent of the time bet the over, regardless of the line. Doesn't matter. But if you played Aaron Rodgers, oh were, yeah, you were not grimacing. Finally, we got a we got a nice quarterback, a nice fantasy quarterback performance from Aaron Rodgers, Devontae Adams, with the massive, massive bounce back week. Eight for one fifty six in the first half. Yes, they did not seem interested in playing defense on him, <laughs> and there was creative play calling, getting him into space to use his legs and run, but. <sighs> I hope you enjoyed those 180 yards. That's a career high for him, by the way, in total yardage in a game. But then he went down, and you have to wonder if the end of this game is different. Multiple goal line opportunities on two separate drives it might without have Devontae been, Adams. It might have been different, but I'm throwing the probability it was would have been the same with that play calling. It was, with, with it was that, bad. With that play calling, meaning – throwing for it like four times yes. that are on the goal line would have been very different if you had Devontae Adams for four passing plays. Yeah, it actually reminded me of the end of the – it was exactly the same as the end of the Cleveland Browns game where you had four opportunities at the goal line. They were all passing plays. Ill-advised throw by Rodgers. Right. Remi I'm all for Reminded trickery. me of the Super Bowl. I'm all for trickery and trying to catch a defense off guard for throw by throwing on the goal line sometimes – but when you have that many opportunities on the one, it's a yard. Run the ball. Fantasy-wise, Rodgers added to his stat line with 46 yards on the ground. He had 422 through the air, two Woo. touchdowns, one interception, one fumble. It was a pretty good performance from Rodgers. It was, you know, two touchdowns. He still didn't see that explosion. But Devontae Adams did most of the work in the passing game. Jimmy Graham was resurrected and allowed to play in this one. Yep. Six for 61 and a touchdown. Allison had a touchdown in this one. MVS was a fantasy disappointment. Three for 47. Seemed to be off the field in strange circumstances where you expected him out there. I don't know if he was dealing with something. Zach Ertz, seven catches on the Eagles side. Alshon, three for 38 and a touchdown. Frequently targeted. I think that was what stood out to me. Nine targets, only caught three of them, but clearly the first, second, third read, well, him and Ertz, 
yeah. was pretty much the entire offense in terms of passing targets. The next highest targeted player was Jordan Howard. Oh, weird. You never want yeah. that as part of your <laughs> in-game bullet points. But you know how they do tr- you know how they do like trickery, right? Like, oh, we're going to line up in jumbo, but then we're throwing to a tight end. That's what you do when you run Jordan Howard out to a screen. They go, oh, they're not going to go to – they would never throw to Jordan Howard. And Dude. then he had a receiving touchdown. So to Jordan Howard's credit, they ran that Kansas City Chiefs wheel route, and Howard secured the ball and had a nice touchdown. Jordan so, Howard balled out. Yeah, yes, 15 for 87, 5.8 per carry on the ground, two touchdowns. Do you – you know, I have a dynasty team with Miles Sanders and Jordan Howard. Obviously, I didn't play Jordan Howard last night. Of course. And he had 33 fantasy points. What do you do moving forward with that backfield that seemed like – I guess the one saving grace here is we had two guys receive all the carries. You know, Sproles didn't receive any of the carries. So what do you do? Who uh, would you start next week? Look, now that Jordan Howard is a little bit more involved in the passing game, you every time they got to the red zone, it seemed like it was Jordan Howard's job. There's more trust there. Obviously, you've got the fumbling issue of last week with Miles Sanders and – Jordan Howard's a big bruising back. I mean, you saw He's a on, good his last, on his last touchdown uh, run, it was he took a huge hit there at the one-yard line, bounced back and got in the end zone. So I don't see them going away from Jordan Howard at the goal line. And if you've got the touchdown upside with Howard, I think you've got to start leaning that direction. I think, I think it looked like to me it was – they went hot. They were going hot hand. Like Howard was the better player last night. Yes, Miles Sanders saved his day. He ripped off a big run, and he also had the you know the the big special teams return. But that doesn't count for most fantasy leagues. It looked like a hot the hot hand for Jordan Howard. So they just kept going to him. I expect it will still be even. However, Jason is correct. It, red zone and goal line work. That's Jordan Howard until further notice. Nelson Aguilar cannot drop. Anything when he's not targeted. <laughs> it's, it's that meme. Like, you can't drop it if they don't throw it to you. Yeah, so he was the, he was a complete goose last night. If you decided to roll him out there Woof. over Jeffrey or something Woof. of that nature, it didn't work out. Now, Adams, the big news circling back there as we get into our in and out segment and the rest of this show, which has uh, we'll have fantasy forecasts, the rest of the matchups. I'm going to sneak an upset of the weekend there. We've got. Ballers on a budget. But Devontae Adams, the big news is he departed with the toe injury. Yeah. Had the monstrous 10 for 15, uh, 10 of 15 targets, 180 yards. He diagnosed himself with turf toe. Pro football doc feared turf toe. He couldn't put his shoe on after the game. What are we expecting from Devontae Adams over the next few weeks? They have a long week being the Thursday night game, but I think you have to expect him to miss a couple of weeks. I don't think he's going to be back Sunday. You can hope he's back the following Sunday, but I think it's more realistic that the Sunday after that. So if he misses the next two weeks, I think that both Geronimo and MVS become playable assets. I, I expect Geronimo Allison to actually have the bigger uptick in a role as kind of a more sure thing with Rodgers long term. He's played with them. He knows them. MVS is really talented, but he doesn't he doesn't seem to be in sync with Aaron Rodgers you know if he gets 10 11 targets I don't I don't think it's going to be you know I feel like those games is where he catches four or five of those targets he's he's more of a secondary option rather than the primary guy I'm most excited if, if in Adam's absence on actually being able to count on Jimmy Graham as a tight end yeah I, I think that's a great point I mean I think we saw as soon as Adams went off the field, it was, you know, 11-yard pass to Jimmy Graham, 10-yard pass to Jimmy Graham. That was the surprise, you know, the, the impressive thing to me. I think you downgrade Rodgers, obviously. They have – their upcoming schedule is at Dallas next week and then a juicy matchup at home with the Detroit Lions. You had a major injury to Jamal Williams. Yeah. Taking him off the field to finish that game up with the running backs. Aaron Jones did absolutely nothing with his opportunity. He hasn't been able to run the ball effectively. This team hasn't been able to run the ball effectively at all through the entire season. So Rodgers is having to do more. He threw the ball to Jones on several occasions. Hopefully Jamal Williams will be okay. That was a scary situation uh, for him and Maddox in this game. Two players stretched sure. it off. That was that was not fun. So uh, right now it looks like Aaron Jones is going to be the guy moving forward, but efficiency has been a huge problem. 
Yeah, huge. I mean, you're talking under two a carry, and it wasn't just. Is this goal a Matt Lafleur problem? In terms of they could, you know, I Jones could run the ball. I choose to believe that it just doesn't seem like he's ever in a position. <laughs> like a lot of these runs were not his fault. A lot of these runs were two or three guys in the backfield, good defensive front for the Eagles. I think that you know didn't help anything. But you would have expected more than 21 yards rushing in a game where Jamal Williams left and Aaron Jones is the only player in town. Yes. All right, it's Friday. Foot Clan Friday. As we head into the weekend, each and every Friday, we want to say thank you to those of you that support this independent podcast at jointhefoot.com, the official Foot Clan community. And today, this fine Friday, we give Rick and Moore TDs. Oh, I see what nice. you did there. That's the winner this week, Foot Clan Friday winner of a $55 oh. gift card to shopballers.com. Thank you for supporting the show. We appreciate you. You can find that community at jointhefoot.com. You can follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. You can find us on YouTube, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. We're going to be paying out a number of water bets today. That this video will show up tomorrow on the YouTube. Uh, we have week two and week three to pay out. Mike, you and I had that. McCall Hardman, John Ross bet from week two. Both players balled out. You beat me. You're going to water me today. We had a 77-yard Juju Smith-Schuster bet in week three. He had 81 yards, and you beat me again. These, uh -huh. are, these are narrow wins. They hurt more that way. I'd rather be blown out like <laughs> Not Jason. Not only were they narrow, they were by the skin of my teeth oh, just, with a John Ross garbage TD and then that 76-yard juju team. Now, when you say blown out like Jason, you mean blown out like Jason did to you with the Dolphins doubling up that over-under. Yeah, I volunteered to take two waters for the Patriots-Miami game where I said that Miami would... I hope you brought I, a wetsuit. I took the really outlandish approach that they might not lose by 20. Yeah. And they lost by 40. And then... Uh, <laughs> I like you used the mocking voice. <laughs> they lost by 40. Well, so I, it was not a smart move to say they would lose by fewer than 20. Correct. It's just <laughs> a little unnatural to be like, yeah, I think they might be able to stay yeah. within 20 and then feel like the idiot. But they're the Dolphins, <laughs> so I should have known better. And then, Mike, I beat you with the... Uh, I'm going to water you for the Eric Ebron top 12 yes. tight end week two bet. So we'll have a number of those. We'll film them today. It'll be fun. It'll be on YouTube.com slash Fantasy Footballers tomorrow. Let's go ahead and do some in and out. What's it going to be, McFly? Are you in or out? All right, lots of injury news, notes, reports. Running back, let's start there. Rashad Penny? He returned to practice, so I would expect him to play. He returned to a limited practice. Sure. Th I'm going to go no. I think he's out. I think he's going to play. This was the expectation from the previous Sunday. They they expected him to th – this is the timetable that I think they set for him to come back on this Thursday. So I'm going to say he's in. Damian Williams, the knee injury, didn't practice Wednesday or Thursday. In or out? Out. Out. Justin. Shady uh, been full, full go yeah, as well. He's a, he's a full go for your roster. Justin Jackson, calf injury, added to the injury report. We don't know a lot, but oh. what do you think? In or out for Justin Jackson? I, I don't that's a, like... That's a West Coast practice. We don't have that yet. And oh. it's one of those late injuries. Like, Rashad Penny was a... He returned. This Justin Jackson's now added to the injury report late. Is this the, the, the window that Melvin Gordon sneaks in and gets, like, eight touches? I'm going to say no. I think Justin Jackson plays. Gordon's okay. inactive. All right. All right, Royce Freeman. I'll say he's in. Devin Singletary practice again today. That was Thursday a and Friday. Do you think he plays? Yeah. If he's practicing, yeah. I think he'll be out there. But I'm with you, Mike. That's surprising. And I, I would be fearful to play him. I would be trying not to practice if I was Devin Singletary with this <laughs> Patriots <laughs> matchup. No. Uh, it's nice to see him return quicker than we expected after seeing the injury on the field. Rex Burkhead limited on Thursday. In or out? In. In and playing against Buffalo. What would you do? Would I play him? Correct. Oh, no. Yeah. Ito Smith resumed practicing on Thursday. Should be in there to yes. disrupt your Devonta Freeman. Wide receivers. T.Y. Hilton with the quad injury. Didn't practice Wednesday or Thursday. In or out? Man, that's, that's tough because he's missed a lot of practices and still plays. I'm going to say in. I think he's going to play. I think he will play, too, but it's it's everything's today's practice. Do you play report. him if he's in? I think you have to. I do. Yeah, at this yeah. point. Julian, and hopefully he's very respectful of your fantasy team the way Devontae Adams was. 
going for and, a career high in yardage before getting injured. And the way that Hilton did last. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. He is. He's a respectful man. Of course. A fine, he is. upstanding Plus he's citizen. Plus, he's got a touchdown streak. Yes. Julian Edelman with the chest injury in or yep. out? In. in. Amari Cooper? In. Yep. Mike Williams with the back remain sideline on Thursday. Seems similar to the week before, a different yeah. injury, but I, we did see him active. I believe he will play, but caution. Is it a little concerning that this week it's the back issue, which was the major issue last season? From that, what I understand, it was a, it's, it's not related to that. Okay, however. so just same body part, different correct, injury. Correct, correct. Yeah, okay. it's concerning that he's on the injury report every week. That doesn't – I don't like that. So I don't mind people pivoting away from – what seems like an opportunistic matchup to go with somebody you know is going to be out there. Chris Godwin with the hip. He, he missed practice Wednesday, Thursday. Fortunately, he did return to practice today. So in. Yep. Calvin Ridley? In. Terry McLaurin added to the Redskins injury uh, report. This one's scary, you could oh, say. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, you Look, when a guy's added to the injury report midweek, it's more likely he's going to miss, but you just have to wait for the last practice report to know. We'll let you know. It's a hamstring injury, and we'll let you know if we hear anything by the end of the show. And we obviously, Mike is on with you an hour before game time for starts at decisions, and we'll keep you updated on the social media as well. Chris Conley with the knee injury, limited Thursday. I don't, you know, I don't think he's going to play, and I don't, don't care if he does. Yeah. Albert Wilson is expected to return for the game against the Chargers. Cool. Uh, it, it, not playing him, but excited to watch Albert Wilson play. All right, tight ends. Vance McDonald, Monday night game, didn't practice Thursday. You need – I'm uh, not playing Vance McDonald. Yeah. I, I'm not I, putting myself in that position. I, they, they say that, you know, he could be there, but I just can't imagine they, they ship away a fifth rounder for a tight end while their tight end is injured because he's going to play. So I'm going to say out. Mark Andrews with the foot injury, returned to practice Friday, didn't practice Wednesday and Thursday. I think he's going to be in. Yep, par, he's in. Par for the course. Delaney Walker with the knee, didn't practice Thursday. Walker and Greg Olson, they're – they're getting that old man rest, I believe. I I think they both will play. Can we take off a couple of days every week once we hit a certain age? Is yes. That the, yeah, that's how it works. Okay. No, and amazingly. Bro Brooks and Al Borland will be doing the Thursday, Friday practice, uh, shows. Uh, sorry, Foot Clan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, like I said, game day alerts. You can get the injury reports before you have to make those decisions at jointhefoot.com each and every week. We post those Sunday live on Twitter and Periscope and Facebook and all that. Mike, I'm, you've got something to say. I'm just laughing right now because we refer to these guys as they're you know, like old man, the old right. man strength, the day of rest. and like They're all younger and, than us. And Greg Olson looks like, I mean, that's a, that's a lumberjack. That's, that's a seasoned a man. man. We are older than, than Greg Olson. And he, I feel like Greg Olson could be my father. Like right. that, that's the age discrepancy <laughs> between the two of us. And honestly, I think he could have been. That's <laughs> how much a man he was. He was one year old when he became your father. It's a frightening world, but you're right. You're right. I, I thought he was 56, so I didn't realize that he was younger than us. Yes. Uh, news and notes, injury reports, all that stuff brought to you by the Sleeper app. Don't miss big-time fantasy football news updates. This morning, I was brushing my teeth. Mm. Got the report on Sleeper that Chris Godwin was back at practice. You probably brushed with a little more vigor after that. No, I, I, a little less. I was real tense, and then I calmed it down ah. to the appropriate level with my quip. <laughs> 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 All right, we're going to get into the fantasy <laughs> forecast, and we want to thank CBS Sports HQ. Today's episode brought to you by CBS Sports HQ. Sports TV nowadays is full of the bickering and the made-up drama, but CBS Sports HQ... I disagree! <laughs> it's here to change that. CBS Sports HQ is a network that streams 24-7 to bring you top-tier sports and fantasy coverage without any of the yelling and fake debates. They bring you the latest news, highlights, previews, recaps from around the sports world, the latest stats, injury updates, in-depth breakdowns and analysis, and best of all, just like this podcast. It's free. Nice. Not free for a week, Jason. Or Fair. a month, Jason. Or if you have some special cable package, Jason. It's just totally free. 100% free. You don't even need to log in. Open the CBS Sports app. Watch anytime from, from anywhere on your phone or at home uh, on your Apple TV, Roku or Fire, T Fire TV. It couldn't be easier. Download the CBS Sports app and watch CBS Sports HQ today. I can afford it. You can. Also, Foot Clan. Are you aware that on average a burglary happens every 23 seconds in the U.S.? But only one in five Lock homes the doors, Brooks. have security, probably because most companies 
don't make it easy. Genuinely, those super long contracts, the the high prices, uh, but not Simply Safe. Simply Safe makes it easy on you with no contract, hidden fees, or fine print. They protect every door, window, and room with 24/7 professional monitoring for just fifteen dollars a month with no contract. That's why before Simply Safe was a sponsor, we used them to protect our studio. Going on three years. They've now. won a ton of awards from CNUT to the New York Times Wirecutter. Shout out Wirecutter, love that place. One thing that makes Simply Safe stand out is their video verification technology. Other home security systems are triggered, police are warned, they just think it's a false alarm, and they slowly come around. But not Simply Safe, using their video verification technology, they can visually confirm that the break in is happening and allowing police to get there three and a half times faster. Look, visit simplysafe.com slash footballers. You'll get a free shipping and a 60-day risk-free trial. You've got nothing to lose. Go now. Be sure to go to simplysafe.com slash footballers so they know our show sent you. Simplysafe.com slash footballers. Fantasy Forecast. Excited to get into the remaining matchups for week four. Yesterday on the show, we did the Panthers... <clears throat> Texans, Browns, Ravens, Chiefs, Lions, Patriots, Bills, Chargers, Dolphins, Raiders, Colts. Those matchups on yesterday's show. Go ahead and listen in, and you'll get the uh, you get the breakdown. It's free. It's free. <laughs> it, it is. <laughs> Eight matchups remaining on today's show. Ballers on a budget after that. The Titans, Falcons. They play in Atlanta. Both teams one and two. Falcons are four-point home favorites. 45.5 point over under. Mariota, Mount Ryan. I know we're not interested in the alliterative Marcus Mariota. No. Just because he has the same letter at the front of both names does not make him a start, it's, Mike. It's, it's a sensational name, to be fair. I mean, that is a comic book. It's the, the, He's an alias. So the, perhaps, perhaps he's... Not as good in the NFL because he's actually a superhero and he knows that he has to feign his he's, strength. He's really uh, been in the Bruce... He's, gr he's a great actor. Yes. If that's the case. <laughs> he's been in the Bruce Wayne state for yes. many years now. Matt Ryan is our consensus quarterback 10 on the week. He's averaged 309 passing yards per game. Are you playing Matt Ryan against yes, yes. the Titans defense? Yeah, the, the matchup stinks, but it's Matt Ryan... At home, he's he's averaging over 300 yards, multi touchdowns every week. He's he's a good fantasy start. Yeah, I look at Matt Ryan in this game very similar to how I looked at Carson Wentz yesterday. Like, he, yeah, you know, you got to play him. We we have this track record of of stats so far. It's three games. I think Matt Ryan at home is a must start. Yeah, you. I mean, I was in the off season. I was the anti Matt Ryan believer. Two of my biggest reasons were the defense. They lost so many pieces last year. And the running game couldn't, you know, it wasn't going when they lost Devonta Freeman. Well, the running game's not going with Freeman. Keanu Neal now is out. So, yeah, I mean, at home, Matt Ryan is pretty much a weekly start. Uh, Devonta Freeman, 20 touches last week. It was a bit of a product that Ito Smith was knocked out of the game and Ito Smith has resumed practicing. We'll see if he plays or not. That'll have the, a lot to do with the, the confidence you can have playing Freeman because the matchup is – it's back to a rough matchup for Freeman. I, I'm not sure that I would want to play Freeman. I mean, you might have to, but yeah. even if Ito is out, this is a bad matchup for a guy that just hasn't been able to get it done. Yeah, I think this might be the week he gets a little bit more involved in the passing game and does enough. I'm I'm willing to make a top 24 bet with you, Jason, if that's... Oh, uh, top 24. He's in my top 24. I'm not oh, going to bet against my makes, own rankings. And that's what makes that bet so good so for me. So this sounds like you would play him then. Yeah, it does, based I, on your rankings. Talking out of both sides of your mouth yes, over you are, here. Yes, you sir. I would not play him, but he's a top 24 guy, so then I would 100% play him because you played two running backs. Yeah, take a stand. I'm chasing more. Here's the deal. <laughs> My rosters have better than two top 24 running backs. Oh, so, you know, oh. look, if your nasty <laughs> rosters are like, oh, running back 24, that's exciting, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Sorry about your roster. Now, who, Jason, who are your running backs, Jay? Uh, Austin Fournette. Eckler. Alvin Kamara and Dalvin Cook. Those are don't 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 look this up. <laughs> don't look this don't look this up. Derrick he Henry. Just, I think he just read off his I top three. I think he just read the top three backs. running backs. Oh my backs. gosh, those are the top three. Man, that's good. 
You're an excellent uh, fantasy player. Uh, Barry, Barry, Barry Sanders, uh, <laughs> Emmett Smith, and Ladanian Tomlinson. Derek Henry, Jason, you have him at RB6 this week. He's averaging 17 rushing attempts per game. Falcons been middle of the pack against the running back position. We know that Tennessee to win must hand the ball to Derrick Henry over and over and over again. I'm comfortable with him, obviously, in this matchup. I think we all agree. Oh, yeah, I'm comfortable playing him, but I'm, I don't have him as a high-end start. Like He could easily get game scripted out. Is there another player matchup. on Tennessee that you're willing to play in this game? Walker. Walker. Texas Ranger. Delaney? Yes. Targets? Six in game one, six in game two, nine in uh, yeah. the week three. If Walker plays, you play him. Austin Hooper, my tight end start of the week. What about Hooper versus Walker in this one? Who would I'd, you rather have? I think I would play Hooper. The matchup is solid. The, the Titans, the only place they're really being beat for fantasy purposes right now is the tight end position. And Austin Hooper's he's young and practicing. Yeah, that that's helpful. You want a guy yes. that's going to be playing. I've got a back-to-back of my rankings. I have Delaney Walker one spot ahead. Little known fact, Dawson Hooper is actually Greg Olson's son. Mm. Yeah. Makes sense. It does make sense. Yes. Uh, what about Calvin Ridley? How are you guys feeling after his uh, lousy I'm game last him. week? You are playing him, Mike. Yes, I will play Calvin Ridley. So what does that mean? Where do you have him ranked? Uh, let me let me pull up my rankings. But like, he obviously only had one target last week. Yeah, I, I, I just I, didn't know what he was before last week. Was he a, he's like a, he's a, a flex play? Yeah, he's a wide receiver two slash three. Okay. But with... Matt Ryan, he has upside every single week. So he's he's a, just in there as a weekly play for Yeah, him. I think I would start him as well. Yeah, the Titans have the highest pressure rate in the NFL. The Atlanta offensive line, not exactly strong. I think that'll be the push-comes-to-shove part of this game. The Redskins at 0-3 take on the 1-2 Giants. What a barn burner this is going to be. It, hey, look. It, it actually might be. be. It's it the, could be. It's the third highest over-under of the week. The Giants are three-point home favorites. The over-under is 49.5 points. That puts the Giants at 26, the Redskins at 23. So, Daniel Jones. Yep. He had the second best debut ever for a fantasy football quarterback. We have him at consensus QB 13 this week. Case Keenum at 23. Can you trust Daniel Jones? I don't think that that's possible. I don't think you can ever take a player that – has one NFL start and say, yes, I trust him to deliver. But is he – does he have potential in this matchup? Oh, yes. You have to say yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I think he is an excellent streaming quarterback this week if you're up against it. Washington 28th against the quarterback position for fantasy scoring. They they get beat there. And look, Daniel Jones, he looked solid. This wasn't – to me, we've all seen the quarterback come in and – they, the, the team rallies behind the new quarterback. They pull out a win, and the quarterback gets all this credit. But you know if you watch the game, the quarterback did not win that game. Daniel Jones was a huge part of the Giants actually winning. I, I feel like he is a competent quarterback, and he's in a plus matchup at home. Yeah, so at yes, home, I'm the, Redskins, stream him. the Redskins are giving up 79% completion percentage. That is the highest in the NFL so, yeah, I, th I think Daniel Jones could be played, especially when you add in his rushing baseline. Uh, yeah. You know, he rushed a lot in college, and so far, week one, two rushing touchdowns, plenty of yards on the ground. Uh, I, I think you could stream him. Wayne Gallman? You, got, you just got to play him. If you spent all that money, you're playing him. Adrian Peterson. We have him right on the outside edge of, of running Man. back three. He's in the category where you're saying, do I want to play Frank Gore against New England or do I want to play oh. Adrian Peterson against the Giants? Oh, that's a punch in the face. I would go Peterson in Out that case. Out of those case, two, yes. But it's not been pretty. And then Chris Thompson being worked into this offense, the Redskins throwing the ball 14% more than they did in 2018. That's the largest pass uh, increase in the NFL. They Their defense is not showing up. I mean, I think that's a big part of it, and they're having to hand the ball to Case Keenum to come back. That's why we've seen Terry McLaurin have success through three weeks. Does it continue in this one? I mean, the Giants defense, ew. Yeah. yeah. The Giants <laughs> defense, is, this is why there's a high over-under on the, on the game. We say it could be a barn burner. I could very easily see, even though it's almost a 50-point over-under, taking the over on this game. I don't see either defense doing anything good, and both offenses can compete enough. 
against these specific defenses. So, yeah, I mean, I think you start Terry McLaurin. I think you start Sterling Shepard. I want pieces in this game. Not so much the Adrian Peterson. You know, I again, I would take him over Gore. This could be a game that the Redskins are up and winning and he stays in the game. But if it turns into a barn burner, which I – I lean the prob odds on probability are that yeah. this is going to you know there's going to be a lot of points scored then I'd rather have Chris Thompson. Adrian Peterson, I'll give you an example of when I'm going to play him because I I think he's the guy that you don't want to play. He's the like in case of emergency break glass type of player. You know, in one of our leagues, I have him on the bench. I'm looking out on the waiver wire. It's it's Adam Humphreys. It's Cole Beasley against New England. It's it's kind of like well I, if I give. If Emmanuel Sanders was to miss the game because he's a little banged up or Chris Godwin, surprise, missed the game, that's when I put Peterson in and go, at least I know they're going to hand him the ball 10, 11 times. Maybe he'll fall forward into the end zone like he did a couple weeks ago. But you can't be excited about Peterson. No doubt about it. No. Buccaneers, 1-2, and two, take on the Rams. Rams are 3-0. and oh. Game has a 49.5 point over under as well. The Rams are 9.5 point home favorites. We know Jared Goff's a lot better at home. We have him at QB8. You feel comfortable with Goff? Yes, yeah, I, I really like golf this week. Uh, the whole home road narrative that I've been pushing against seems to have been true, at least so far, and he is at home. While the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense has looked better, they obviously were beat by Daniel Jones pretty heavily last week. So I, I think at home the Rams – this is a bounce-back game to me for the Rams. Yes, they're 3-0, and but you haven't really loved the offense because you haven't loved Jared Goff. You haven't loved Todd Gurley. I actually think both players have a bounce back game. I think they're going to try to get Gurley going in this. So I, I really like the Rams this week. Do you buy into the reports that, you know, Gurley at 15 touches a game, they actually want to get him the 25? No. That was that was coach speak when he was asked a question about that number saying, yeah. But if you listen to him, Sean McVay does go on to say, I don't believe the number thing, but he said, I want to get him in more of a rhythm and set him up to succeed. That's where he's been blaming himself, and we've seen that with Gurley. That's where you've been blaming him. Yes, I've been blaming <laughs> him because why aren't you getting him involved in the screen game, getting him on, you know, in a rhythm? And if that's an effort given by Sean McVay, I think, look, Gurley's been out there. He's not, I mean, we're worried about the workload, but he's not currently injured. He's still the same talented guy. Before the season, if I had said he'd be three weeks in, 71% of the snaps on the season. I think we'd all have imagined so him being – He's a top ten guy. Exactly. Top five. Exactly. So we've been – you know, they have not taken him off the field. They're 3-0. and That's a good sign. He's Is he a buy low for you? Uh, if, if you believe McVay can – you know, even some small involvement in the passing game is going to change the narrative quite a bit. I traded for him this week uh, in our listener league because I think this week he's a buy low. That being said, if he – balls out and looks amazing yeah I'm gonna listen to offers because I still worry about the long-term uh reliability Peyton Barber Ronald Jones you starting either guy in this one the Rams the only place they have been beaten has been at the running back position because their corners are incredible and they have a great pass rush so occasionally running backs have done a few things against them giving up 22 and a half fantasy points but if you have to pick one where do you go uh I guess Ronald Jones because <laughs> please don't pick one. Is that the answer? Because it's just reactionary to what happened last week. This is a this is a tango that I want no part of. Evans and Godwin, you starting these guys against these yes. incredible corners? Yeah, I yes, think you, you have probably to. have to based on where they were drafted, who they are, and what your the rest of your lineup is. But I'm I'm expecting a poor game out of Jameis Winston against the Rams. So that Evans obviously coming does off. not bode well for Evans and Godwin. Evans coming off the eighth best fantasy game by a wide receiver over the last 10 years. And we were on the other end of one of those, yeah. and it didn't feel good. Thanks, Mike. <clears throat> Cooper Cup, Brandon Cooks, Robert Woods. That's the order you'd start these guys? Yes. Yeah, you, you have to go that way, even though Robert Woods, he's seeing the exact same target share as Cooper Cup. When you're watching the game, The there, there's a – there's a sink problem to me right now with Jared Goff and Robert Woods. The targets are just – they're not 
they're not as catchable. They're just, they're not as nice as these Cooper Cup receptions. Where I mean, he's running free and wide open. One, so one so thing some of it's on Woods. Yeah, one thing that's been interesting. If you go back and look at the matchups and who's been guarding who, the top corner for the first three weeks has has been more on Woods. And I wonder after last week if that starts to shift. If if defenses start to say we need to look at Cup. As the, as the one, put our best guy there. Well, you see, be Cup, interesting he's just going in the, forward. He's, he's just in, in the slot, slot yeah. so I don't think you're going to see that. I think it, I think it, it'll be interesting if at home, if we see Woods in this game not be able to kind of break through, I think fantasy owners are going to get pretty worried about his production and where it, you drafted him. Fair. Because he, he's never really had the, the high-end upside, so you at least want to have the 10, 12 points a week. I think Howard has an okay game in this one. I really do. Howard is my number 10 tight end. And it's terrifying. Like I've still oh, got him be as, at ten. Yeah, because oh. he, he should be good. He should have been good week one, two, and three. He was fine last week. I think he's probably you'll he'll see more targets this week. I think they're going to need to utilize him, Godwin, if the Rams defense focuses on slowing down Mike Evans and those corners on the outside. That's that's my guess. You know, you got to put Winston in the position where. He can evade this pass rush with some help underneath. I hope Howard is that guy for fantasy purposes. I'm fine starting him. You guys ready to move on? Yep. All right. The Seahawks, 2-1, and one, take on the 0-2-1 oh, and one. Cardinals in Arizona. Seahawks, five-point road favorites in this one. What are we expecting from Russell Wilson and Kyler Murray? So, if, Russell Wilson, you you play him. The, the matchup is super juicy. You are... You're just you're hoping that the Cardinals can keep up because I knew Russell Wilson's massive game last week. I think he threw the ball 50 times. Like that's that is not what Pete Carroll and the Seattle Seahawks want to do. They'll do it if they have to, but they really don't want their offense running that way. So it, it's well they Russell, had to, but that's what I mean. But Russell Wilson's high end finish this week would be predicated on the Cardinals keeping up. No, I, I don't think that's true. I think Russell Wilson's high-end finish could be the product of just super efficiency with some Disley touchdowns, a Tyler Lockett bomb touchdown, a DK Metcalf. The the Arizona Cardinals are going to give up a lot of points. That we know. We just don't know where they're going to come. If I had to guess, I think they're going to try to get Chris Carson going in this game. They want to be in control in a divisional matchup. I love Chris Carson this week. The Arizona Cardinals gave up a monster game to Christian McCaffrey. I think that... Will Disley, Tyler Lockett, Chris Carson, you have to start. And it's going to be the Cardinals, shockingly, playing catch-up like they have done the entire year. They have still yet to run a single snap with a lead. So the only thing we know about the Cardinals is that they throw the ball a lot when they're down, and they're always down. The Seahawks' defense, it's not been good. No. I would say, you know, bottom third, Kyler, DJ, Fitzgerald, I assume we're starting those three. Christian Kirk, are you yes. willing to put him out there? Yeah. The, look, the volume has been fantastic for the wide receivers. It Right now, Larry ranks fourth in targets at 31, and Christian Kirk has 32 targets. They're, the, the volume is great. Kyler's not throwing the ball deep down the field, but he's throwing the ball a lot, so it works out for, for fantasy. We, we wish we would see them going down the field a little bit more, but you still have to be pleased with the 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 mid to late round values that that Larry and Kirk are providing. Chris Carson, you you've shown yeah some confidence in him start of the week. I have Wilson as my start of the week against Arizona's defense. Lockett has been outstanding, second most targets over the last two weeks after the the weird the weird week yeah. one where he still delivered though he had the big play. And then Will Disley, Will Disley, kind of our show start of the week this mm -hmm. week. Arizona. Dead last – this is shocking. This stat is shocking. 25.4 fantasy points per game given up to the tight end position. To, to the, think about what that means. The tight end at, on a team that usually scores like no fantasy points on average is averaging 25 fantasy points. That's why Montana's Gatorade High School Player of the Year in 2013, <laughs> the big Montana himself, is our star of the week. Will Disley. Whoa! Oh. Yeah! Come on. Get it going. Big Montana. He is everyone's favorite play this week. Hope it hope it turns out. Hope it pans oh, out. Oh, it will. It's funny because I doubted Olsen last week Disley. on the 
Injury return. It was like, uh, Kyle Allen, new variable. We know that Cam Newton loves Greg Olson. He's banged up, and he just balled down. Yep. Yeah. So, did you say he's Montana's Gatorade High School Player of the Year in 2013? Yeah, yeah. super impressive. Yeah, I'm calling Big Montana for nothing, <laughs> and they equals us. <laughs> Vikings 2-1 and one at the Bears 2-1. and one. Bears two-point home favorites in this one. What are we going to get out of David Montgomery? You know, this is going to be the toughest test for Dalvin Cook. Right now, the Vikings only passing the ball 38% of the time, which is shocking. Dalvin Cook has been absolutely dominant. He's the number one fantasy running back on the year. He's tied for the most forced missed tackles, second in yards after contact. Every metric you can look at, production, uh, you know, his running ability, it's been off the charts. But this is a really difficult matchup. The Bears are fourth in the league. They're only giving up 15 fantasy points per game to the running back. What do you think? Yeah, this this projects to be a really bad game for fantasy. When you have two teams that want to win with defense and you have two quarterbacks that aren't the best and the good quarterback out of the two of them is on the road. They both – the quarterbacks would also like to win with defense. Yes, exactly. So – uh, you know, it's one of those things where I think the running game is where both teams are going to try to rely on, but it's not going to be easy against either of these two defenses. You're obviously going to be playing Dalvin Cook. I still think you play Adam Thielen, even though, you know, the the you're scared about the volume, you're scared about the matchup, but I don't know how you sit Adam Thielen. He just still gets it done pretty much every week. You know, you're not you're not starting digs, right? No. No, this matchup is just too difficult for Diggs to have that breakout game. It should get better for Diggs, but this is this is really frustrating for a lot of fantasy owners, fantasy owners that spin a third round pick in dynasty leagues or traded for him in dynasty leagues and wonder what the future is going to hold. Like you said, I mean it's a thirty eight point over under. Vegas does not have this as a high scoring affair. So fantasy points are gonna be few and far between. That's what makes this David Montgomery situation very difficult. He's averaged 15 and a half carries over two weeks. You can be as angry with Matt Nagy as you want to be because of maybe when those carries are coming, being on the goal line and have uh, not running the football. But David Montgomery being a youngster, a player that you believe in, a tackle breaker, 15 and a half carries, is his time coming? Yeah, I mean, this, this is the type of game that I think they're going to try to make his time. The problem is the matchup. I think he gets you sure he's not going to make it Mike Davis's time or Cordero Patterson's time I mean, or we, Tariq we, Cohen's time. We certainly can't be sure, but I think that the probability says that Montgomery is going to get the lion's share of the carries. It's going to be a tough matchup. I think you could start him. He's our RB24 consensus, but you, you just can't expect a huge game against such a tough defense. Allen Robinson against this Vikings defense. What do you think? I, you can play him. I mean, he's getting nine targets per game, 26% of Mitch Trubisky's targets. I, he's, he's, he's in that 2-3 area. I mean, I would, I would rather play Allen Robinson over Stephon Diggs. Oh, yeah. I feel like the name should be brought up anytime you score three touchdowns in a quarter. Taylor Gabriel, he had a monster game. He does this all the time. He, he lures you. He's like a Venus flytrap. <laughs> He's he's oh look look all these fantasy points that I can score, ha <laughs> I got you zero no interest, like interest like if you want to add a speculative ad, <laughs> but I am not chasing uh, the I'm points. not I'm not falling for the, it again Taylor no You've you don't got chase me the like points. five times you know he, he the truth the, is he's really good yes and he's super and he fast just, the consistency of targets there it's tough he was the wide receiver three this week but if you want to chase these points. Nobody was week one and week two. He was the wide receiver 80 and 84. He reminds me a little bit of Brandon Cooks in the way that not only is he really fast, but he makes contested catches at you know, with a small stature on, on the reg, but he doesn't get the targets Correct. regularly, and that's the trouble. Well, and they're also, they're also Trubisky targets, that which was, are totally that's, different. That's the problem. That's if, when the ball's spinning <laughs> horizontally, right? Yes. If you told me... <laughs> That you get David Montgomery, Tariq Cohen, Allen Robinson, Taylor Gabriel, Trey Burton, and you replace them with a quarterback? 
I mean, this should be a really fun offense. You're not interested in a quarterback that can throw three touchdowns in a single quarter, Jason? I am not interested in a quarterback that could throw three touchdowns in a single quarter if his name is Mitchell Trubisky. Got Otherwise, it. I'm in. Is this the sixth touchdown week? I want to know when the sixth touchdown week's coming this year. I thought it was happening last week. All right, the Jags, one and two. Take on the Broncos. Oh, hooray. <laughs> oh, and three. 38 and a half point over under. I don't know. This is like the previous game. This is like the Vikings Bears, only with even less exciting prospects to me. Right. Yeah. I mean, you. Right now, Jason, real question. Let's put you to it. Okay. Joe Flacco. Oh, God. Do you want him running your offense or Mitchell Trubisky? Oh, my Can... goodness. Gross. Um, I would go with Trubisky because he's mobile. And he can get out of the pocket, and when things break okay, down, I just had to just had to figure out where you were, man. How deep in this Trubisky hole you were? The the Denver fans were waiting with bated breath, saying, "Oh, this is it. This is our time. We get a little no." Yeah, sorry, still Flacco. All right, Gardner Minshew, Joe Flacco. You don't play either one in this game. No, Minshew's on the road in Denver. It's a low over under. No, thank you, Leonard Fournette. Philip Lindsay, Jason, you're the highest on Lindsay this week. Last week it was a good week. Royce Freeman's Royce Freeman's looked pretty good this year. Seems to be back. Are you playing these these guys against Jacksonville? I I am like in, so I'll use my team as an example. In my in my money league, I have to choose between Philip Lindsay, who I don't want to play against Jacksonville, but then the other options are are like. Daryl Williams, who – what's his role in Kansas City because now Shady's been upgraded to full? Or like Frank Gore, who should still see the, the majority of the work for Buffalo with, with Singletary coming back. And right now I'm going with Phil Lindsay. Just, I would too. The, the options behind – when you when Lindsay's your two, you're, the options you have behind him are probably not much better and you don't want a part of the matchup. However, saying that, like if you're playing – Philip Lindsay with any type of confidence. I think that's like, it's the exact same confidence I have in Royce Freeman. They're both going to see very identical work. Both are involved in the passing game. So I, th I think that Royce Freeman is also a playable guy. Yeah, last on the week's, same level of Philip Lindsay. Last week's fantasy finish for Philip Lindsay looked really good compared to Royce Freeman's. If you watch the game, they were they were involved about the same. Royce Freeman had one of those two touchdowns. So if that touchdown goes to Royce Freeman, that was called back on that phantom hold right. by Emmanuel Sanders, then all of a sudden the week looks even between these two guys. But Philip Lindsay is still the uh, still the more explosive guy. If you're going to tell me one of these guys is going to run off a 40-yard touchdown, it's going to be Philip Lindsay. If you, uh, on Sunday, if you're walking around the house and you feel kind of some malaise or nausea, you feel a little not yourself, check your TV, make sure this game's not on. That right. could be actually the reason why. Slowest pace of play in football for Jacksonville. Ugliest pace of play in Denver so far. The Broncos' <laughs> That's defense. That's a trackable get stat this. now. Yeah, yes, it is. The Broncos' defense has exactly zero sacks on the season. This was the formidable, mm. incredible. It's Because it's, this looks like a good defensive on, play right on, on paper. Denver at home against Gardner Minshew looks like a great play. You've zero got, sacks. You've got Vaughn Miller. Zero sacks through three games. That's it's it's outland with Vic Fangio coming like the defensive genius running the show. It's it's really unbelievable. Um, here's I think the the only question in this game. Like I'm not playing DJ Chark. I know he's been on fire, but he gets Chris Harris Jr. Yeah, I you saw what he did to Devonte Adams. Um, but what about Emmanuel Sanders and Cortland Sutton? Jacksonville's a great D, but they're they're not going to have Jalen Ramsey. That changes things. Is that where, where it is trended to? Is Ramsey looking like he's going to be out? I believe they are going to be without Jalen Ramsey. Because he, he had the the wink-wink flu, and then he had like a wink-wink. No, he had a well, real he had child. A real, a real child. child. That wasn't a wink-wink child. He flew to, I believe, Nashville. <laughs> he's there with James White. He's just like. Yeah, I just wanted to see James White's <laughs> baby. <laughs> no, but he says his, his trade request still stands. Right. So. I, I don't believe he's playing this week. I think okay. he found the loophole. Good if his you, wife man. can have a baby next week, he's look. He's out there looking for. If he can find Sam Darnold, you know what he's after that. <laughs> oh, he's a little smoochy smooch. Because he doesn't want to take the field Just for Jacksonville give me a kiss, anymore. Sam. 
That'll buy him, what, four or five weeks at least. Oh, man. Genius. Sam All Val. right, Sunday night football, Cowboys, Saints. Cowboys are two-and-a-half-point road favorites in this one. 47-point over under the Saints. They won last week. The impressive performance against Seattle. You know, the, the Carson turnover didn't help the momentum of that game, but I, I think I was impressed with what I saw from Tre Teddy Bridgewater able to kind of manage the offense. And obviously, obviously Alvin Kamara is so good that you can kind of hand him the whole offense, literally. Here, here's the thing that's the most surprising, probably the most surprising stat I've heard in a, a long time, but certainly within this matchup. Yesterday, we were talking about the Miami Dolphins as the 31st best team <laughs> right. against quarterbacks. And Mike was blown away. They're like, wait, there's someone worse than the Dolphins? And it turns out it's the Saints against the quarterback, and it's on the back of giving up four rushing touchdowns already to the quarterback through the first three weeks. And now they're playing Dak Prescott, who's known for uh, supplementing his touchdowns with rushing touchdowns. Mark of the Beast, each of the th first three years, he's had six rushing touchdowns. <laughs> this matchup seems like one that you want to say might be scary for Dak, but it might be, I mean, oh, no, it I'm, looks great. Not scary? Well, no, 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 I'm Dak just saying, Prescott. like, team. You look at last year, uh, the, okay. you know, the Saints were a great defense. They're still good against the run. You just wonder. But I th I think I think Dak's going to have a good game. Well, yeah, and I mean, if, if you look at that stat, maybe that one's – it's a little contorted by rushing touchdowns. But then you look at what they've given up to the wide receiver position. They're 30th in the league, 42.5 points per game. So they, they haven't been able to step up there. You've got Amari Cooper has been extremely consistent. He's the wide receiver four on the season. He's a go-to guy in this new downfield offense where Dak is, you know, taking shots, picking his spots. I, I just like Dallas in this game. You know, you got a 24 and a half point uh, implied point total. The Saints at 22. I, I like obviously Dak, Zeke, Cooper. They're in. Are, yep. Is there somebody else you're taking a shot with on Dallas? If you have to pick another wide receiver, for example, because you look at the situation, Michael Gallup's not back yet. They have given up a lot of points to the wide receiver position, and Amari Cooper had a precautionary MRI. So if you're taking a shot, is it on Randall Cobb? Is it on Devin Smith? If I'm taking the the shot, I'm going to go Devin Smith. We, you were, we would hope that Randall Cobb last week would step up in the absence of Michael Gallup against Miami for targets. And these are it's Randall Cobb targets, so it's he ends up with two for twenty three. Devin Smith is not Devin Smith <clears throat> had five targets right, last week. I'm not calling him a great play or anything, but <clears throat> it's it's unfortunate that he's Sunday night. So if you're playing like if you're playing the main slate of DFS, we're gonna do our ballers on a budget segment here coming up, where we're talking about bargain plays for FanDuel. And I wanted it to be Devin Smith, and I'm like, ah, but he's Sunday night, so you can't put him in in the main slate. If, so to answer your questions, if I'm taking the shot, I'm going big play for Devin Smith. You're you're un, in the dome, and you got some probably the smart play. You got some rough cornerbacks for for the Saints. They they have one really good one, and then a couple really bad ones, which is why they're giving up over 40 points to the wide receiver position. So I'll go with Smith. Yeah, most of the starts in this game are just obvious ones. Michael Thomas, right? Alvin Kamara. All right, the Bengals take on the Steelers. This is the Monday night football game, and this is my <laughs> Andy's almost upset of the week. The winless Bengals go to Pittsburgh. Steelers are four point favorites. <laughs> this is the Monday night game. I'm going back to the well with the Bengals. Last week they delivered the almost upset against the Bills. I think they do it again against Mason Rudolph in the divisional matchup. Mason Rudolph, 14 completions last week, 174 yards. It was gross. Somewhere there is a, a, a high-ranking executive who has lost all his all of his hair as he gives a gaze to the Monday Night Football upcoming schedule. Someone's gonna win this thing. From what? Well, maybe <laughs> not. Not maybe. necessarily. Oh, that would be so great. If what do you think the Ravens would think if they're sitting here and their two divisional opponents here end up with a tie? A, four, a six to six tie. No, I I think that the Bengals will be able to do enough against this Steelers defense. I know the Steelers are trying to shore it up with Minka Fitzpatrick, and it looked a lot better last week. It really did. 
They were a studly defense last week. They were, which is what makes it so incredible that they are currently 24th against quarterbacks, 29th against running backs, 28th against wide receivers, and 19th against tight ends because they did look pretty good last week. So thanks Patriots week one. Yeah. That disintegrates your whole, yeah. your whole season. But at the same time, we've seen Andy Dalton uh, given a license to throw the ball over and over and over again. And there are problems in the Steelers secondary. They have the second highest pass play rate in football right now at 72.9%. They run three wide receiver sets 84% of the time, which is why you can look at both Tyler Boyd and John Ross in this matchup. Yes. Uh, Ross has a lot more risk to him than Tyler Boyd does. Ty- Tyler Boyd has a 24% target share. He's been double-digit targets every week, and he's Jason's start of the week for a reason this week. I think Boyd is the safest. Ross is the riskiest with some upside. Yeah, that that's how I see it. I mean, obviously, Mika Fitzpatrick helps the defense a lot against the slot, but still, you have a very good, highly targeted wide receiver. I'm confident in Tyler Boyd, even though... I'm not confident in Andy Dalton. I think that, you know, one can have a good game without the other. Dalton, I mean, on paper. Dalton should crush Dalton this week. Dalton should crush. I still worry. I know it's narrative driven, the whole Andy Dalton in prime time thing. But, I mean, it's, you got a, you got a lot of. That story got started for a reason. Yeah, that story got, I mean, since 2011, Andy Dalton in prime time games is 6-15, and 15, uh, 2 and 5 on Monday Night Football. <laughs> so. You it's, know what jumps out of me with that stat? Too many primetime games for the Bengals. <laughs> right? Like, wait a minute. How many? Why do you keep giving Six them primetime? Six and 15 Goodness. since 2011. I wonder who hates primetime more, Kirk Cousins or Andy Dalton? That's Ooh. the real question. Oh, what if they played each other in primetime? Oh, goodness. It would be a 6 maybe they would. Maybe that's what would break the curse. Ooh, you know what I mean? You like, have to do that. Like, yeah. you, it's like you smash the mirror. Like exactly. putting you in the room with the spiders. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. At the running back position, James Conner, Joe Mixon, it's been it's been rough for both of these guys to yeah. start the season. And it's no surprise when you have winless teams that their running backs are struggling. It's a it's a chicken egg thing at times, but generally I like running backs on winning teams. I like that for the sake of game script and opportunity and uh, goal line opportunities and all of those things. I do like James Conner to have a bounce back in this game. Bengals are giving up 32 fantasy points per game to the running back position. 168.7 rushing yards per game, second most in the NFL. This, this is impossible. a great matchup for James Conn. This is this is your shot, James, to to let me know if if we can count on you in the right matchups despite Mason Rudolph sure. or not. And so I have him as my start of the week. I think he shows up in this one. Joe Mixon, Pittsburgh's given up the third most rushing yards. Mixon looked pretty good last week in a tough matchup. You know, the question fantasy owners may have is, has the ship sailed on either of these guys putting up a top 12 season? No, I, I don't I don't think the ship has definitely sailed. Joe Mixon dealt with an ankle injury, missed part of week two, wasn't right for week uh, or week one and wasn't right for week two. Tyler Boyd, we talked about that side. Juju, he was in the panic room on Wednesday. It's not been good for Juju. Can you play him in this game with confidence? Yes, I think you can play him in this game with confidence. He's this is a, this is a very beatable matchup. He's at home. Uh, I think Mason Rudolph will play better at home when you know you're not dealing with crowd noise and things like that. He's still targeting Juju. I think all Juju needs is ten targets, and he'll do something with it. Look at last week where you know it was it was rough. Mason Rudolph looked bad, but Juju made his own breaking away for a 76-yard touchdown. That's not to say that Juju is, you know, a top five wide receiver this week, but I'm starting it with confidence in this matchup. Okay. All right. This is, Somebody's got to win it. <laughs> that's that's the truth. Injury update since the show started. Scary Terry still not practicing on Friday. Uh-oh. Late week injury ad. Mm. Two missed practices. Not good. Jamal Williams says he's good. He says the only thing hurt is his pride from not being able to finish the game. That's a good report after what happened to him. That's uh, awesome. They say Godwin will be a game day uh, decision, but it's nice that he returned to practice. And then T.Y. Hilton remained sidelined again on Friday's practice, throwing some doubt there. Ooh, so yeah. uh, let's go ahead and get into um, our Friday segment. Ballers on a Budget, presented by FanDuel. 
Yar. I don't know why I became a pirate there, but I was excited, and my voice is like this. So well, Yar is what you got. Maybe you had Scary Terry in your, in your mind, and that's a good pirate name. That is. It's, Scary Terry. It's a well-known fact that pirates, as they pillaged and they, you know, they journeyed the seas looking for booty to steal, mm -hmm. blues music. Mm. That's, that's how they got ready for battle. That's, uh, I didn't know that, Mike, but thank you. Wow. So look, Foot Should've. Clan, we're, we're giving you some of our favorite picks that are cheaper on FanDuel, guys that we think can very much outproduce what they cost right now. And, and you guys can get in on this. Uh, the Fantasy Footballers Leaderboard Series is going on. And, and just so that everybody knows how this works, because you might think, oh, maybe I didn't play week one, week two. Maybe I've never played FanDuel. Right. Look, this is... We set this up this way so that everyone has a fair shot every single week. All you have to do every single week, it's a brand new contest. You win any one of these weeks, and there's limited participants just for the Foot Clan. You win any of them, and you're automatically entered into that prize. There's a ton of uh, prizes we're giving out, including the all-expense-paid trip to Arizona to hang out with us, do a live recording. Uh, so it's going to be great, uh, a great time. What's the web address, Jason? Oh yeah, if you want, I guess if <laughs> I guess if you want to play, you can go to fanduelcom slash ballers fanduelcom slash ballers uh, Since I'm talking, I'm gonna go with my uh, super chalk. I think it's chalky, but I think you you you're going to benefit from putting Wayne Gallman in your lineup. He's priced like old Wayne Gallman. He's at fifty nine hundred dollars. That's what you'd pay for Rashad Penny who might not play, or Tariq Cohen, who has done nothing. Wayne Gallman is inheriting the Saquon Barkley role. He he won't be Saquon Barkley, but in a game that we expect a lot of points to be scored, Wayne Gallman at 5,900 is a steal. Usually I like putting a lot of my money into the stud, stud running backs and finding cheaper value elsewhere, but this week with Gallman mispriced, I would throw him in my lineup. All right, I'm going to go with Hollywood Brown. Hollywood. I was really surprised. I saw him at $5,700 against Cleveland. He's been targeted 27 times on the year. I want people to understand. That's the same as Kenny Galladay. That's more than T.Y. Hilton. That's more than Julian Edelman. And this is a player that had limited snaps in week one. I just think you, you get everything that you could want. You get a bargain price on a player that can boom for you and has the target baseline. So Hollywood Brown at 5700 is my favorite pick of the week. That price point for Marquise Brown is it seems that's wrong. broken man like yes you are 100% right Andy that's that's a fantastic call I wanted to go with scary Terry at $6,300 against the New York Giants the matchup he are would, you going from Terry to Larry I might have to yeah. oh <laughs> I may have to do that look I'll give my piece so uh, Terry McLaurin the Giants are giving up the most points to the wide receiver position. He should be matched up against Janoris Jenkins, which is one of the most advantageous matchups of the weekend. But he's not practicing again, so now I have my concerns that he's actually going to play. So I will pivot to Larry Fitzgerald. Larry's at home. The Seattle secondary is absolutely beatable. Larry Fitzgerald has had double-digit targets two of three weeks. He has scored in two of three weeks at home. So I, I think that he is he is safe for volume, and that his his pricing point at fifty nine hundred is it's very fair. Do not miss your chance, as Jason said, to win an all expenses paid trip out here to Arizona. Hang out with us, the Fantasy Footballers Leaderboard Series. You can go to fanduel dot com slash ballers. That's fanduel dot com slash ballers to enter each and every week. Lots of prizes. We're giving away DFS passes as well, and be sure to check out the DFS podcast. Oh, Jake, yeah. Jake Seeley, Joel Holka, Chris Meany. These guys are killing it. Uh, I just did Sealy's other show this past week. Uh, he's he's all over this thing. He's enjoying hosting that show, and they're bringing forth some really valuable information for your DFS uh, lineups each and every week. want to thank the studio sponsor, Pristine Auction. I signed Marlon Mack jersey yesterday. $55. $55. Oh. Oh. oh, that just totally cut the <laughs> outro off. Oh, fantastic. It was worth it. I didn't know it would do that. Oh, Let's hit it again. Marlon Max signed jersey, $55, $55, as I said. PristineAuction.com. Use the registration code BALLERS. Check it out, PristineAuction.com. Thanks for listening. Good luck this weekend. Good luck on Sunday. Goodbye.
Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Foot Clan, remember that Simply Safe makes home security easy with no contract, hidden fees, no fine print. For just 15 bucks a month, you get 24-7 professional monitoring throughout your home. Visit simplysafe.com slash footballers. You'll get free shipping, a 60-day risk-free trial. That's simplysafe.com slash footballers. Simplysafe.com slash footballers. Protect your house.